I know bipartisanship is hard, and unity is hard, but we can never stop trying. Because in moments like this one, the ones we just faced, where the American economy and the world economy is at risk of collapsing, there's no other way. No matter how tough our politics gets, we need to see each other, not as adversaries, but as fellow Americans. Treat each other with dignity and respect. To join forces as Americans to stop shouting, lower the temperature, and work together to pursue progress, secure prosperity, and keep the promise of America for everybody. We are back with Stephanie Rule, host of the 11th Hour, and joining us is Ali Velshi, MSNBC chief correspondent and host of Velshi. Um, Velshi and Rule, I managed to get Velshi and Rule back together. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> we love I love oh, man. It was one of my favorite things. I loved you guys together. Um, so I'm going to go to you first, uh, Ali Velshi. So Biden uh, and his sort of low caffeinated version of the presidency, one of the things I feel like it's really done is it really does demonstrate for everyone to see undeniably how ineffectual the screaming memes on the other side who get a lot of our time, they get a lot of our attention, they actually are completely ineffectual because they make a lot of noise and they get a lot of headlines. But in the end, it's the normie politicians who go behind closed doors and save the economy and pass things like making sure that, you know, our debt doesn't go over the hill, that they protect Medicare and Social Security. And I wonder if at some point, you know, even Republicans start to say, maybe we're exhausted by having a million little Trumps, maybe we just want the economy to stay good. Yeah, I think it, I think it's both that people are exhausted by by Trump and, and and the million little Trumps, and there is something to be said for just demonstrating what slow and quiet work does. Uh, it was I was enjoying the conversation that you had for the first half of the show about uh, not just Joe Biden but Kevin McCarthy both sort of signaling at some point, as Chris uh, Hayes said, that McCarthy's not going to shoot the hostage. So all of these people on his side who kept on shooting and kept on saying these things at that point were, were not really holding a lot of power because it doesn't, this is not, had this gone to the brink and it did seem that both Joe Biden and Kevin McCarthy did not believe it would get there, although we came awfully close, uh, I think a lot of Americans would understand that the reason you get sent to Washington, if you go to Washington, no matter who you are and how far to either side of the political spectrum you are, is to get certain things done. And there's a bare minimum about what you can do. And that should be budgeting, appropriations, and paying our debt. Yeah. Uh, after that, you can do whatever you want or not do whatever you want. But these are actual basic responsibilities. And there are a whole lot of people in Congress who did not seem to get the memo about that. Fortunately, Kevin McCarthy did seem to understand that. The point you make is that you know, after 15 ballots clawing his way to the speakership, <laughs> we didn't know whether that would mean that he'd have the ability and the gravitas and the authority to pull this off. And I am pleased for the country that he did. Joy, this is an and, I, and I will note that, oh, I will just say no, very quickly that uh, Biden very pointedly thanked Hakeem Jeffries uh, because in the end, Democrats were needed in order to deliver this because there weren't enough yep. Republicans to That's do it. A go, lot go of Democrats step. were needed, actually, yeah. But exactly. Joy, it also shows that that Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates faction, what they are, are media stars. They are very, right. very loud media stars. Because remember, as Chris Hayes said a moment ago, and filling in on Newsmax, that's their next gig. Right in the yeah. middle of Kevin McCarthy's uh, uh, multiple votes, I interviewed Lauren Boebert. And during the commercial break, you know what she said? How do I get a gig like this? That's what they are thinking <laughs> about in their next move, right? How do I become a paid speaker? How do I speak at the NRA convention? Because that's their jam. In the last administration, Marjorie Taylor Greene wasn't even sitting on a committee. And Kevin McCarthy just showed up at the table. And again, there are lots of things to complain about him. But I would also say, this vote was so consequential to us just doing the bare minimum. It's really an issue for any lawmaker to vote no. And while we all sat here and said, these Republicans that are obstructionists, that are voting no, are trying to tank the economy, people are also looking to Democrats here. And while I totally get it, they, in many senses, they want to not just play to their base, but, you know, serve what they went to Congress to do, something like the debt ceiling isn't something that you could be a purist about, because if we went into default, the consequences are catastrophic. But let, let, you talked about Hakeem Jeffries. Hakeem Jeffries, the reporting indicates, was in the wings for, for McCarthy, saying, 
I, I'll, if you can get your enough of your people on side, I can get the rest of the that's people right. on side and, to do and it. And right. that is what we need of lawmakers. Yes. Hakeem Jeffries not drop kicking him in the hallway. And trust me, Hakeem Jeffries has a million reasons why he could could and should hate Kevin McCarthy. But he didn't guts, do anything. He, he didn't. Did, he wasn't he all over TV. He wasn't talking about it. That's he was right. in the wings saying. But to the president and to McCarthy, we'll get this done. Whatever you need, once this is, is about to cross the finish line, we're here. Well, and the thing is, is that you know that we, we now know just through the reporting that there was essentially a group of Democrats yep. who were prepared to back McCarthy if one of the, you know, out there crowd decided that they were going to try to pull this move of trying to have a, you know, a vote of no confidence in the speaker. Yep. The deal was made the way old fashioned deals are. But I do want right. to talk about some of these other because you did talk about the progressive caucuses, you know, challenges with the deal. First of all, the climate deal that was made with Joe Manchin, I think, was one issue. But there are these questions about whether we're balancing the interests of seniors, you know, seniors, Social Security, Medicare, et cetera, and balancing the needs of the most, um, the, the people who need the most in this country, Allie. There was a lot of talk on the Republican side about gutting food stamps, yep. about work requirements. People already are working, um, trying to really stick it to the same people that they always try to stick it to. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you, you know, Lawrence will say this all the time, that you can make a statement vote when your vote isn't needed. But if their votes had been needed to pass it, you got to believe the Democrats at least would have gone on and passed it if their votes were needed. But talk a little bit about that, because we don't really yeah. talk about the working poor. People say things like working class, but there are a lot of people who are working hard every day and still do need food stamps. Yeah, I think that would that would surprise a lot of people who don't live in that world. And that is the number of people in this country who are on food stamps or other forms of assistance with jobs. And anybody right. with a calculator on your phone, take it out and understand that the federal minimum wage remains $7.25 an hour. Multiply that by 40 hours a week if you're lucky enough to just have to work uh, 40 hours a week. There's nowhere in the country you can live for that. In most places, right. it's not seven twenty-five; it's nine or ten bucks. There's an effective minimum wage of fifteen dollars in a lot of the country. Fifteen bucks an hour, you're making thirty thousand dollars a year, right? So, right. why are we looking? If we haven't, uh, if you have a view that we don't take in, in enough money or we spend too much money, both of which are, can be true, right? You can either get more revenue or you can spend less. Why is this the pool that we're looking at? Here's is my why. Only problem. Because and by the way, none of this improves unemployment. Unemployment's at 3.7%. Because it's a great for Republicans. It's a great false narrative. It's a, it's it's a great false. false narrative to tell people living in the suburbs that in those urban centers, yeah. people are just sitting around couch, and they're not working. Couch, couch right. potatoes. They're, they're not working. They're just getting yeah. welfare. And those and 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 those Republican voters don't know any different. Right. But we had and, we, we, and, right. and meanwhile, not and meanwhile, to gain Stephanie. The votes. And meanwhile, Stephanie, we're sitting on a 3.7 percent unemployment rate. Yep. Um, so we're sitting at essentially full employment, 339,000 jobs created in May, which was well above expectations. The average hourly wage growth only went up 0.3 percent, up to $33.44 an That's hour. There, there are all these disconnects, right? Yes. You're telling people go out and work when essentially we're basically at we're, full the, employment. Most people, people are, are working. working. So we have, we yeah. have more open jobs than we have unemployment employed people in America, and that's, that's right. because of the mismatch. Either they're in the wrong place or they have the wrong training, right? But that, you, you, you hit the magic number there, 339,000 new jobs. Stephanie, when we used to get 150,000 new jobs in a month, we'd think that was, you know, uh, blowing the roof off. 339,000, 3.7% unemployment, and yet look at the small wage growth there. So the, the poor people are not causing the problem. They're not causing the inflation. They're not doing these things. And as you and I discussed the other day, there are actual studies to show that if you, if you increase the work requirements for the assistant, assistance that people are getting in many cases that they already work for, you don't reduce uh, unemployment. You don't get more people onto right. the rolls. What you do do is you have less people getting federal assistance. So in That's a country right. that has the yeah. third highest poverty rate in the developed world, all we're going to achieve with these work requirements is a slightly higher yeah. poverty rate. And remember, Joy, and, and we do not have affordable child care in the United States of America. So while you are saying to people, go out there and get a yeah. job, on a the heels of that job, kids or they parents. are taking That's care right. of, 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 of elderly people or children, which are hugely expensive to care for in yeah. any kind of daycare system in this country.